بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته اليوم المحاضرة الثالثة من شابتر الهيماتولوجي بعنوان هيموليتيك أنيميا Why RBC is destructed? What are the causes of destruction? Increased red cell destruction or hemolysis is due to either red cell membrane disorder like hereditary spherocytosis or red cell enzyme disorder like G6PD or hemoglobinopathy, thalassemia, and sickle cell anemia, or the immune response. What is the meaning of hemolysis? Hemolysis is pretty destruction of RBC. As you know, that uh, normal RBC is destructed in the body. Uh, around the around 120 days but if there is a disorder leading to premature destruction of RBC we call it as hemolytic anemia anemia results when the rate of the destruction exceeds the capacity of the marrow to produce RBC normally the marrow has a capacity to form produce RBC in, in, in the state of the RBC which are destroyed normally but in when the destruction is more rapid more severe the abomero cannot cooperate with this rapid destruction hemolytic anemia may be classified into there are many classification for hemolytic anemia we could we could say intrinsic or intracorpuscular destruction بسبب داخل الخلية كرية الدم الحمراء نفسها أو extra cellular abnormality of the erythrocyte extrinsic نسميها or extra corpuscular resulting from antibody أو mechanical factor or plasma factor leading to destruction of the RBC يعني العامل اللي يؤدي إلى تحتيم كرية الدم الحمراء خارج الكرية هذا extrinsic أو extra corpuscular other classification as inherited hemolytic anemia or acquired hemolytic anemia and there are immune hemolytic anemia or non-immune hemolytic anemia or according to the chronicity as acute hemolytic anemia or chronic intravascular or extravascular all these are hemolytic anemia classification the clinical and laboratory features suggestive of hemolytic anemia when you see a patient with color, ecterasia and jaundice, splenomegaly, gallstone, history of neonatal ecteras, he has history of neonatal jaundice, positive family history of anemia, splenectomy, cholecystectomy, all these are a hint from the history. From the laboratory investigation, an increased retic count, RDW, uh, increased abnormal RBC morphology from the blood filling in direct bilirubin. Uh, increased, but the direct is normal. It means hemolysis. Serum haptoglobin level decrease. Urinary urobionogen level increase. Hemoglobin urea by positive dipstick test from from the blood in the urine. No RBC in the urine. And hemoglobin in the urine contain a positive dipstick test. Like no aku a pure RBC in the urine. And I don't call it hemoglobin in the hemoglobin urea. Increase LDH as any hematic anemia. Increase erythropoiesis in the bone marrow. <clears throat> uh, 
راح نتحدث عن type of rheumatic anemia كمان نشوف نشوفه هو hereditary spherocytosis it is an autosomal dominant inheritance less frequently recessive يعني mostly autosomal dominant it could be recessive but 25% of the patients have no previous family history representing recessive inheritance or mutation uh, it means that if we ask the family there are no any family history of the same condition so it could be mut new mutation it is caused by mutation in the gene for the skeletal protein of the red cell membrane mainly spectrine and green this results in the red cell losing part of its membrane when it passes through the spleen so destroyed in the microvasculature of the spleen and what is the defect here the defect is in the membrane of the rbc so when it pass into the spleen it will be destroyed the severity of the disease varies and can be clinically classified as mild, moderate, or severe. Mild cases of G6PD deficiency are asymptomatic, forming about 20 to 30 percent of all the cases. The moderate, or the typical, اللي هي كمان نشوفها, 60 to 70 percent of the cases have partially compensated hemolytic anemia with reticulocytosis, with symptoms of fatigue, pallor and intermittent jaundice. Splenomegaly is common. But only 3 to 5% of the cases are severe, have life-threatening anemia, and are transfusion dependent. Bilirubin gallstone can form as early as 45 years of age. It means Many patients with G6PD deficiency can develop gallbladder stone from early life at about 45 years of life. Hereditary spherocytosis patients are susceptible to a plastic crisis and hypoplastic crisis or megaloplastic crisis. This crisis can result in a profound anemia, the hematocrit less than 10%, high output heart failure, cardiovascular collapse, and death. Leukocyte and platelet count may also fall. Other crises they are susceptible to is splenic sequestration crisis. Splenic sequestration crisis uh, means sudden increment in the size of the spleen associated with a shock-like state. The diagnosis of hereditary spherocytosis is established from history, clinical examination, splenomegaly, and from laboratory investigation of blood film. It is low, no, I mean corpuscular volume is low, or even slightly decreased. Lytic and spherocytosis. The number of spherocytes are variable, likely reflecting the severity of the disease. And if the spherocyte, spherocyte uh, rate in very increase, it means severe, moderate, or few spherocytes in mild cases. If these are present, no additional testing is necessary to confirm the diagnosis. If we see there is family history, the patient has splenomegaly, and from the blood film there is spherocytosis, so the diagnosis is accurate. Mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration more than 35.5 for a gram per deciliter with RDW, RDW less than 14% has been suggested as a screening test for hereditary spherocytosis. Only as a screening test.
لو ناخذ مثلا عدد كبير من الناس دايجنوز هيرتس فيروسايتوسيس simply from being called to explain hemoglobin concentration is high but RDW is less than 14% if the diagnosis is less certain till now there are many many other tests like binding of fluorescence labeled eosin 5 malamide to bind three and other membrane proteins is decreased the binding is decreased in hetero spherocytosis erythrocyte this test depends on the binding of fluorescence labeled your seen malignant five to three protein membrane this flow cytometry test this is flow cytometry test is easy to perform and has good diagnostic sensitivity and specificity. If the diagnosis is not sure from the history, physical examination, and blood film, this test is diagnostic because it is more sensitive and specific. What about the osmotic fragility test? This test detects the presence of spherocytes in the blood, but it is not specific to hereditary spherocytosis has, has poor sensitivity and may miss cases of mild hereditary spherocytosis where the numbers of the spherocytes are few so it is less sensitive less specific than the flow cytometry test other assays such as cryohemolysis test Acidified glycerol lysis test, osmotic gradient ectocytometry have been used for diagnosis of cytosis, but these tests are not available in many labs. Genetic diagnosis is available for hereditary spherocytosis. Differential diagnosis. When we see from the blood film spherocyte, there are many differential diagnoses, either isoimmune or autoimmune hemolytic anemia. For example, IBO incompatibility in the neonate. Rare causes of spherocytosis include thermal injury, clostridial septicemia with exotoxemia, and Wilson disease. Treatment. What is the treatment of uterus spherocytosis? Supportive therapy. Supportive care. By annual visit to the hematologic, usually, uh, to the hematologist, usually is sufficient for follow up. You should follow the growth of the patient. Growth should be monitored. And it Exercise tolerance and spleen size should be documented. Vaccination should be up to date. Spleening for gallbladder disease should begin at about four years of age. Documentation of parvovirus 19 susceptibility to or immunity should be obtained. HIV and hepatitis serology should be documented. These are supportive care for hereditary spherocytosis. Second point, folic acid should be given because it is a chronic hemolysis and the patient requires folate to produce RBC. In this case, folic acid is necessary. Third point, connect is curative in most patients. Recommendation for splenectomy. Recommendation or the indication for splenectomy, first of all, severe hereditary spherocytosis. Second, should be strongly considered for patients with moderate hereditary spherocytosis. 
or in case of a frequent hypoplastic or aplastic crisis, save their life. If there is poor growth and cardiomegaly, these are the indication or the recommendation for cyclinectomy in hereditary spherocytosis. Other type of hemolytic anemia is G6PD deficiency, glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. This is the rate limiting enzyme in the pentose phosphate pathway, and it is essential for preventing oxidative damage to the RBC. يعني حافظنا على كوية الدم الحمراء من التحطم by the oxidant material. G6PD deficiency is inherited as X-linked and therefore predominantly affect male. So from the history, we should ask about about their aunts, sons, and daughters because it's X-linked disease. Rarely, the majority of the RBC is deficient in this enzyme in heterozygous female. بما أنه هو X-linked الفيميل الميل يكون مصاب لكن rarely قد تكون الفيميل أيضا مصابة because the inactivation of the normal X chromosome اللي يطلق عليها lionization hypothesis what are the common representatives Presentation of glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency could be either episodic acute hemolytic anemia or when they are uh, when they take these oxidant material or can be chronic non spherocytic hemolytic anemia. These are the presentation clinically, yeah, acute or chronic. Is there any variant of the disease? Yes, there are two main variants of the disease, G6PD A and B. The A type, less severe deficiency of the enzyme because it affects only old RBC, common in African American. But the severe type, G6PD deficiency in Mediterranean or B type, more severe enzyme deficiency because both the old and the young RBC are affected and it is common in Mediterranean countries منطقة الحوض البحر المتوسط بما فيه منطق بلادنا clinical manifestation hyperbilirubinemia and even thernectrus if it affects if it is started early on from the neonatal period can develop neonatal jaundice and even pernectras or mostly asymptomatic unless triggered by infection or a drug or ingestion of favabin, so called favism. Typically, hemolysis ensues in about 24 to 48 hours, and appear after 24 to 48 hours after a patient has ingested this substance with oxidant properties. Or the manifestation may present with spontaneous chronic non spherocytic hemolytic anemia. Yani could appear early on from the neonatal period or later on as acute episode after ingestion or taking this oxidant material or maybe chronic non spherocytic hemolytic anemia. There are many drugs عادةً المريض المصاب في هذا المرض بعد ما يطلع من المستشفى يمنح قائمة من الأدوية ومن الأنواع الأكل اللي تؤدي إلى تحطيم كرية الدم الحمراء في حين تناولها فهذا نسميها قائمة بالممنوعات يعطى كل مريض بعد خروجه من المستشفى حتى يتلافى تناول هذه الأدوية أو الأطعمة التي تؤدي إلى إعادة تحلل كريات الدم الحمراء 
the degree of hemolysis varies with the width. يعني مرضى يدخلون المستشفى في فقر دم شديد وحالة خطرة آخرين متوسطة آخرين في حالة خفيفة فقط عند جوندز ما يحتاج علاج فقط مراقبة فاختلاف أو تباين الحالة السريرية يعتمد على أولا the inciting agent يعني النوع الأوكسيدنت ماتيريال اللي تناوله و amount هالأوكسيدنت ماتيريال and the severity of the enzyme deficiency Laboratory finding. First of all, from complete blood picture, we see hemoglobin is low. Then serum haptoglobulin is low. In the urine, hemoglobin, urea, and urobilinogen is positive. The blood film, we see hands body. Hands body is precipitated hemoglobin. Precipitated hemoglobin in the RBC. This is stay for three to four days of illness. Also, the blood film may contain white cell or eaten cell. White cell. or eating cell لأنه خلايا كريات دم الحمراء مقضومة eating cell or bite cell and we see polychromasia anisocytosis during the acute hemolysis erotic is high the diagnosis depends on the direct or indirect Demonstration of of reduced G6PD activity in the RBC. A direct measurement of the G6PD enzyme activity in the RBC. Less than 10% of normal. Less than 10% of the normal enzyme, it means deficiency. This test should be deferred for a week, for a few weeks after illness to avoid false negative results. المريض يدخل المستشفى يشخص يعطى العلاج اللازم الفحص التأكيدي لكمية الإنزيم لدى المريض الفحص يؤجل few weeks at least two months after the illness to avoid false negative results other laboratory finding G6PD variant also can be detected by electrophoretic and molecular analysis. Electrophoretic and molecular analysis. Screening test is decoloration of the methylene blue, methylene met hemoglobin reduction test, it's amino MRT. As a screening test, it is not a diagnostic, but it is a screening test. Can we prevent this attack of hemolytic anemia in these patients? The parents should be given advice about the sign of acute hemolysis. They should know what is jaundice, pallor, dark urine. ينتبهون دائما لهذه النقاط and provided with a list of drugs, chemicals and food to be avoided يعطى القائمة الأدوية والأغذية الممنوعة When hemolysis has occurred, supportive therapy may require blood transfusion although recovery is the rule when the oxidant agent is discontinued It means treatment depends on the severity of the case If it is mild, just supportive therapy, even no need for a blood transfusion. But in case of severe hemolysis, and the patient is nearly shocked, blood transfusion is indicated. What is most important is to follow up this patient, to follow up this patient to see the color of the urine and the general condition of the patient.
If the general condition is improving, the color of urine gets lighter color. It means he is improving. And other type of hemolytic anemia is immune hemolytic anemia, antibody mediated hemolytic anemia. It is red cell destruction brought about by antibody antigen reaction. The defining character of all immune hemolytic anemia is positive direct Coombs tests. Classification of, of immune hemolytic anemia. Either autoimmune hemolytic anemia resulted from antibody generated by the individual's immune system against his own or other type, allo or isoimmune hemolytic anemia from antibodies produced by one individual against the RBC of another individual of the same species. For example, hemolytic disease of the newborn or hemolytic transfusion reaction. يعني if the hemolysis if the hemolysis due to antibody in the same person in the same person means autoimmune common antibody أو أسام مضادة ضد كريات الدم الحمراء التي تعود لذات الشخص لكن إذا الانتبادي تكون مثلا بسبب إعطاء الدم كريات دم حمراء غريبة دخلت الجسم وانتبادي غريب دخل الجسم وأدى إلى تحطم كريات الدم الحمراء للشخص فهذا يطلق عليه ألو أو أيزي أميون ونفس الحالة بالنسبة للحالة the uh, newborn, the hemolytic disease of the newborn, also this is allo or isoimmune hemolytic anemia. What is autoimmune hemolytic anemia? It is hemolytic anemia associated, could be with warm antibody or cold antibody. The autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Which is, which is associated with warm antibodies, usually antibodies of the IgG class, as to say they have maximal activity at 37 degrees centigrade. The warm antibody has maximal activity at 37 degrees centigrade. They are detected using direct antiglobulin test, direct Coombs test. The antibodies usually react to antigens that are common to all human RBC, such as recess protein. Etiology. Immune hemolytic anemia, warm type, it is most, it is most instance, no, in most cases, no underlying cause can be found. This is the primary or idiopathic type. But if it is secondary, in case of the autoimmune hemolytic, it is associated with an underlying disease such as lymphoproliferative disorder, SLE, or immune deficiency. In as many as 20% of the cases of immune hemolysis, its drugs may be implicated. If there is no cause, it is idiopathic or primary. If there is cause like the drugs or any other disease, it is secondary. Clinically, first of all, can present as acute transient type lasting three to six months and occurring predominantly in children aged two to twelve years, account for seventy to eighty percent of patients. It is frequently preceded by infection, usually respiratory. Onset may be acute or gradual. The spleen is usually enlarged, a consistent response to glucocorticoid therapy. therapy. A low mortality rate and full recovery are the characteristic of this acute form. Good prognosis.
in case of chronic course, which is the more frequent in infant and in children more than 12 years, when older, the chronic when older. Hemolysis may continue for many months or years. Abnormalities involving other blood elements are common, and the response to glucocorticoids is variable and inconsistent. The mortality rate is approximately 10%. It means that in case of chronic, is worse prognosis than in acute. Death in chronic cases is often attributable to an underlying systemic disease. <laughs> Diagnosis. Diagnosis depends on clinical finding, the classical red cell morphology, and considerable spherocytosis and polychromasia are present. More than 50% of the circulating RBC may be reticulocyte, and inflated RBC usually are present. Yani after the taking the history, clinical finding, the classical red cell morphology, and positive diet boost test. If a transfusion is needed, it is almost impossible to find a compatible blood. Usually, the least com incompatible unit is chosen for a panel of a blood unit. المشكلة في هؤلاء المرضى من يحتاجون دم ال compatibility تكون كل الصعبة قد نرسل ten unit more than ten unit for the blood bank for cross match and the least incompatible unit is chosen. What is the treatment? Patients with mild disease may not require any treatment. But in case of life saving, in case of severe case, yeah, may require blood transfusion. If hemolysis is severe, glucocorticosteroid is initiated. <clears throat> Prednisone or its equivalent is administered at a dose of 2 mg per kg per 24 hour until the rate of hemolysis decreases and then the dose gradually reduced. Intravenous immunoglobulin may be tried. Rituximab has been useful in chronic cases refractory to conventional therapy. In case of chronic case and retractable to the conventional therapy in the immunoglobulin or corticosteroid, nistakhdem rituximab. Plasmapheresis has been used in refractory cases, but it is not helpful. Splenectomy may be beneficial, may be beneficial. What about autoimmune hematic anemia associated with cold antibody? The cold antibody agglutinate RBC at temperature less than 37 degrees centigrade. They are primarily of IgM. Animal worm can I, can I, G, A, a class and require competent complement for hemolytic activity. Honeybill cold, the manifestation does have a will aggregation of the RBC at temperature less than 37 degrees centigrade, and the antibody is of type IgM. Etiology. may occur in primary or idiopathic cold agglutinin disease or secondary to infection such as those from mycoplasma pneumonia and epistein bar virus or secondary to lymph protective disorder. The cold agglutinin disease is less common in children than in adults. 
and more frequently result in an acute life limited episode of hemolysis. Glucocorticosteroids are <clears throat> much less effective in cold agglutinin disease than in disease with warm antibody. Treatment in case of cold agglutinin, patients should avoid exposure to cold and should be treated for underlying disease. And in the uncommon patients with severe hemolytic disease, treatment should include immunosuppressant and plasma pharesis. Successful treatment of cold agglutinin disease has been reported with the monoclonal antibody rituximab which effectively deplete B lymphocyte. This drug, rituximab, is depleting B lymphocyte. Well, B lymphocyte is the mother of the antibody that we have to use in the RBC, and this is the use of the antibody from the rituximab. Splenectomy is not useful in, gold, in cold agglutinin disease, but it is useful in warm agglutinin disease. وبهذا تنتهي محاضرة الهيموليتيك أنيميا واللي أطلبه منكم أعزائي طلاب المرحلة الخامسة أن تطلعون على محاضرات الهيماتولوجي الموجودة عندكم as a PDF على نفس البرنامج تطلعون على المحاضرات والمعلومات اللي تقدم as a powerpoint هي نفس المعلومات الموجودة بال PDF لتسهيل الأمر وشكرا نلتقي إن شاء الله في المحاضرة الرابعة اللي هي الهيموغلوبينوباتيس